Hi everyone. For my regular YouTube viewers, this video is actually geared towards my students at Parkland College. I'm showing the anatomy of all the lathes that we have in the shop so they can better learn the controls and not be afraid of any one particular machine. In this case, we're talking about a LeBlanc servo shift. Uh, if you happen to have one of those machines or you're thinking of buying one, you can continue watching this video. Otherwise, you may want to just go ahead and turn it off. Of all the machines that we have here in the shop, this one is the easiest to change speeds on. Uh, you actually dial in the speeds on this knob, and you have to make sure when you turn it that you are out of the brake section, which is the red section on this dial down here. And then you can turn it to whatever speed you want. In this case, um, I'll bring it up to 256 RPM. Then you shift back into the red section and the chuck actually changes gears for you. At that point you can go ahead and shift into gear and the chuck is moving at 256 RPM. So if you wanted to then switch over to let's say 937 again you switch out of the red section on the dial you just move this up to 937 switch back to the red section after a few seconds of that, you can go ahead and turn it back on. There's an identical handle on the carriage, and we can go ahead and turn that on there. The red section also acts as a brake on this machine. And if you turn it the other way, the chuck just turns in reverse. And again, red is a brake as well as our shifting section. If you need to do any work where you're spinning the chuck by hand a lot, for instance if you had a four jaw chuck on here and you needed to be dialing it apart, there's actually a neutral section on the dial. It says N right there. And you shift to that just like any other. And at that point, you can spin the chuck easily by hand. Changing feeds on this machine is relatively simple. You've got three handles that you have to worry about. Uh, this one is labeled E and F, and on the feed chart, which I'll have to get a better close-up of, E and F is right here on the side of each of the feed charts. You also have the ABC handle, which on the feed charts you have an ABC range for the E handle and an ABC range for the F handle as well. <clears throat> Someone broke the original ABC handle, so we have this kind of cobbled together one that doesn't work super great. I'll see if I can uh, come up with a better replacement. Lastly, you have a tumbler, which is similar to the, the kind of tumbler that you would see on a lot of older machines. Um, you just pull the plunger out, and this is very similar to the Sheldon machine that we have. And then you would move it into the position that you needed, and then move the tumbler up into that position. So here's a close-up of our feed and threading charts. So here's our feed rate, and the black numbers are in thousandths of an inch per revolution. The red numbers are in uh, millimeters per revolution. Down here is threads per inch. And then on each chart we have an E and an F row, and then an A, B, C row for each one of those ranges. And those coincide with the handles that I showed you earlier in the video. Lastly, down here at the bottom, you have 1 through 8, and those correspond with the tumbler positions on that uh, tumbler handle. For threading, we can cut anywhere from 112 threads per inch up to 2 threads per inch. For feed rate, we can cut anywhere from 1 thousandth and 8 tenths up to 104 thousandths per revolution. So, on this one, if you wanted to cut uh, 24 threads per inch, you would have to have the EF handle in the F position and the ABC handle in the A position and then you would have the tumbler in position number three. If we wanted to be feeding four thousandths per revolution, you would need the EF handle in the F position. There's four thousandths on the chart, you probably can't read it. Um, the ABC handle in the B position and then the tumbler in position number two. 
There is a feed reversing dial on this machine and it's right up here. Um, you actually don't really need to use it because there's another handle that does it on the carriage that is actually a little bit uh, more convenient to use. And I'll show you that in just a second. So here's our carriage. We have our longitudinal handle, just like any other lathe, our cross feed, and our compound. This is the handle that I talked about a second ago that reverses your feed. This machine is a little bit quirky, and all the blondes that I've ever run have been like this. Um, if you were to engage the longitudinal feed in one direction, the cross feed's gonna be going in the opposite direction, which uh, is a little weird, but um, I've seen it on other machines too. Again, here's the power switch, and it's just like the one that's on the headstock. This is our power feed engagement, and up is our longitudinal direction, down is our cross feed direction. There's a little pictogram here that you may or may not be able to see. So you can see that the longitudinal feed is feeding towards the headstock here. In order to engage cross feed, you actually have to pull this out, just like that, see how it slides, and then feed it down. And you can see the cross feed is actually feeding in the opposite direction of the longitudinal feed. So this, you can actually adjust on the fly. You can push that down and it, feed, it changes the feed direction. So now our cross feed is feeding across the part. You'll also have to use that feed direction handle when you change from feed rate to threading. Uh, you may or may not be able to see it, but the lead screw here and the feed rod there are turning in opposite directions. These are your half nuts, and they engage by pushing it down. Just like that. Here's your threading dial on the right-hand side of the carriage, directly next to the half nuts. This is exactly like the threading dial on the Sheldon lathe that we have in the shop. You have one, two, three, and four, and then you have your half marks, which just like that one, it allows you to easily cut double start threads. You would cut one thread at one, two, three, and four, and then cut another thread at the half marks, and the two threads will be 180 degrees apart. The tailstock on this one is also similar to the Sheldon lathe that we have in the shop in that it locks down with a nut down here. This wrench you can actually take off, so make sure that you don't lose it. And you just loosen it up. You can slide the tailstock back and forth and then tighten it in the position that you want. Here is your quill lock for if you were going to use the live center to support stock. Otherwise, if you're drilling, make sure that it's loose so that you can move the tailstock in and out. The tailstock handle does not have a dial on this machine, so any drilling that you do, you'll have to use the scale on the tailstock quill, which is graduated in inches by sixteenths and uh, also in millimeters by the millimeter. This lathe is also different from every other one in the shop in that the taper on it is a Morse 4. You can see the Morse 4 is quite a bit bigger than the Morse 3, which the other lathes use. So when you go to the tool room, just make sure you grab the correct live center or drill chuck. All of the machines in the shop have some sort of electrical shutoff on the back side of the machine. This one is a little bit different than the rest of the lathes in that it's just a switch that you would pull to the side and then you've got a spot for a padlock on there so you can lock out the power and work on the machine without someone turning it on. A lot of times, someone will come up to me and say that the machine is not working and it's just because someone has flipped off the power on the backside of the machine. So if you have no power, check that first. <laughs>